And now we've come to the last speaker of the evening. Uh, they are a researcher, writer, musician, and an animal lover, an advocate of feminism, anti-racism, and trans rights. They blog about gender, singing, and current events at genderqueerme.com. Please give a warm welcome to Ari Aga. I love to sing. I started singing when I was 10 years old and haven't stopped yet. I've sung in church choirs, university choirs, queer choirs, renaissance choirs, gospel choirs, and chamber choirs. Through singing, I've traveled the world and met some of the best people this side of heaven. When you sing, you use your body to produce sound. You are literally your instrument. Technique matters, but ultimately the art comes from your body, not an external implement. You may think then that biology determines your fate when it comes to singing, but I'm not so sure. When I was born, a doctor looked at my genitals and said, congratulations, it's a girl. I was assigned female. I didn't think much about my gender identity as a kid. In university, I learned not everyone felt like their assigned sex was a good fit and that some people transition from man to woman or vice versa. The idea of gender transition was appealing, but while the label woman wasn't right, neither was man. I knew I wasn't a woman, but I thought the only other option was man, and I knew that wasn't right either. In my 30s, I learned there were more than two genders and everything fell into place. My existence finally made sense. It was possible to be not a woman and also not a man. I learned other people felt this way too, and they called themselves genderqueer. Even though I am not a man, I felt uncomfortable with parts of my body that other people labeled female and wanted to change them. So I started thinking about taking testosterone or T. This was a hard decision because we know very little about how testosterone impacts trans people's singing voices. To understand my worry, let's start with anatomy. Vocal folds are mucous membranes that stretch across the larynx, which is located at the top of the trachea. We produce sound by bringing our vocal folds together and passing air through them. We make higher and lower sounds by changing the tension in our vocal folds. Pitch is also impacted by the thickness and length of our vocal folds. People assigned male tend to have longer and thicker folds and therefore lower voices, like Barry White, for example, while people assigned female have, tend to have shorter and thinner folds and therefore higher voices, like Mariah Carey. Children's voices do not vary by assigned sex, but when children assigned male go through puberty, their cords get thicker and longer, and their voices get deeper. When people assigned female take T, our vocal folds also get thicker, and our voices get lower, but there are important differences too. While the vocal folds of trans people who take T grow, their containers, our larynges, do not grow, and are not as flexible as those of adolescents assigned male, so there may be less room for our folds. Puberty for people assigned male lasts several years, but trans people's transitions tend to happen more quickly, and that can be difficult for our vocal folds. Going through a voice change can feel like a train wreck. Your voice gets hoarse and unstable, and you lose power and control. For trans people, though, this may not just be temporary, but a long-term problem. The issue is, we don't know how often people have these problems and how often transitions go smoothly. I had to decide between taking testosterone to reduce my dysphoria but risking damage to my voice or not taking testosterone but continuing to live with tremendous discomfort in my body. Was I willing to take tea and tempt fate? Yes. My discomfort was so bad that I was prepared to risk my voice and begin testosterone. I also decided to partner with my voice teacher to do a case study to document the effects of tea on my voice. This is a picture of my vocal folds pre-tea. 
We'll take pictures again later in the study. We also record me singing the song, Simple Gifts, moving it to lower keys as my voice changes. This first recording is from before my voice started to change. Notice that I sound bright and airy. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free. Tis the gift to calm down where you ought to be. Next up, we'll hear just the first few notes from the pre-testosterone clip, and then a clip from after I had been taking testosterone for 16 months. Notice that both of these clips are in the exact same key, but the timbre of my voice is darker and richer than it was before in the second clip. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free. Tis the gift to calm down where you ought to be. This final recording is also from 16 months after I started T. It shows that I'm able to sing lower too. The key is four and a half steps lower than before. You'll notice that my voice is unstable and cracking in places as I'm still learning to sing in my chest voice. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free. Tis the gift to calm down where you ought to be. After over a year of testosterone, I love how my voice sounds. But navigating this change has been tough. My register changes are unstable, and I have less power, stamina, and control than before. But I'm cautiously optimistic that these problems will keep improving with practice and over time. I'm glad that I did not leave my fate up to biology. <laughs>